Hello everyone, my name is Dean, let's talk crypto. This is where you subscribe for daily Bitcoin updates and technical analysis. We track the price of Bitcoin as a proxy for the cryptocurrency markets at large. Today is April 22nd, 2022, and I'm coming to you for the second time today with a quick intraday update. All right. A lot of people are anxious as to what Bitcoin will do, given the recent price action. We've dumped almost 9% since yesterday morning. All right. And the question is, are we going to have a very red weekend? Or are we going to be targeting the upside as I hinted at in this morning's update, right? If you're interested in what I have to say in this update, what I'm seeing with the very latest price action, then watch until the very end. I'm on the four hourly chart as usual, okay? And just zooming out once more, I'm looking at this channel that we've been in ever since January, and I'm seeing that we're at the bottom, okay? So it's likely that the proper trade, the correct trade, right? Just probabilistically, the right trade is to buy, to long, right? To go up, right? I'm not necessarily longing on um, leverage. As I said this morning, it's not the best idea to long on leverage with this corrective kind of price action that is very unpredictable, right? It's not easy to set a stop. And hence, even if you get the direction correct, uh, where do you set your stops, right? Where do you get out of the way of the price action to be able to continue your trade? That aside, it's still a good idea to buy, to go long, to bet on the price going up from here, given that we're at the bottom of the channel. Okay. Uh, not only that, looking at the stochastic RSI, right? A quite reliable indicator. It's simple, but not overly simple. It shows that we're bottomed out. We are oversold. We're pretty much at three, right? It goes zero to 100. We're at three. So that means we're completely oversold. We're ready to go back up. Not only that, if I zoom in, you can see that we're about to cross bullish. We're about to cross bullish. And we do have some bullish divergence on the four hourly time frame. Do you see this low right here? And this high, now it's not confirmed because we haven't crossed, yeah? We can continue to go down, make a lower low in this stochastic RSI. But if this confirms in the coming, let's see, it would have to confirm uh, in two hours about, let's say, uh, then it would be strong bullish divergence because right, this low to this low right here on price action makes a lower low, but on stochastic RSI, makes a higher high. So here's your bullish divergence on the four hourly, which is a significant time frame to show bullish divergence. Ever since our big dump um, around, you know, 8 a.m. this morning, okay, we've gotten some green candles. Now, we've gotten some green volume, rather, uh, vol volume candles. We haven't gotten more volume than the dump itself. But we've started to have positive volume, right? To the to the plus side. So this is this is a plus. Uh, these are pluses. These are kind of signs for of reversal, right? It could be an intra wave intra wave reversal, meaning just a sort of a small correction for continuation to the downside. But it could also mean reversal of the trend of the downtrend. The other thing I'm looking at structurally, all right, and um, for those of you who subscribe to the channel, you'll know that I specialize in Elliott Wave. This morning, I said that this was a five wave impulse, and I stand by that. I'm still seeing five waves here, right? And I can count them, and I can use uh, Fibonacci levels to confirm this. So I'm seeing five waves here. Uh, maybe the end of the fifth wave's up here. Yeah. And fifth, fifth waves up here, okay? And what I see kind of following that is a correction. I see three waves down, right? So I'm going to go into the smaller time frames and look at this more closely. Um, but this morning, I was saying that this is a two-wave correction. It can no longer be a two-wave correction. Why? Um, I'm of the school that believes that wave two corrections cannot retrace beyond the 618 Fibonacci retracement level of 
an extension. So let's go into an hourly time frame uh, just to see more clearly. If this is wave one of our impulse right here that I just uh, sort of designated with the count, this cannot be wave two for me because wave two only retraces to a 618 or below. And we can see here that we've reached already the 786. And actually the 786 is a prime retracement of a B wave, okay? The B wave tends to retrace to between the 786 and the 914, okay? Typically 786, 886, or 914. And so we've touched the 786 and bounced a bit off of the 786. So this is more than likely to be a B wave. Now, if it's a B wave, what does that mean, all right? Uh, if you see five waves and then three waves, expect five more waves. We call that a zigzag, right? Five, three, five, correction, okay? However, this cannot be a zigzag because, once again, your B waves retrace beyond the 618. Uh, if it's hit the 786, it must be a flat correction. And so for me, there's got to be a small pivot somewhere here on the smaller time frames. So this has to be three waves. Uh, this has to be three waves, and so I'm expecting five waves. So structurally, this is what I'm seeing, right? This is my updated Elliott wave count on this correction. We all know that corrections are some of the most challenging things to count, uh, not just in Elliott wave, but, you know, uh, using classical technical analysis as well. They're tricky, right? Uh, that aside, given the strong bullish divergence that has yet to confirm, but the potential bullish divergence on the four hourly time frame, the fact that we're bottomed out on stochastic RSI, right, on the four hourly time frame, uh, the price action since the big dump, right, this relatively large candle here uh, that we got this morning, given our price action since uh, about 3%, right? And uh, obviously, these are kind of uh, falling stars, so they're not conclusive. Uh, sort of upside candles. However, if they are reversal candles, volume can come at any point, all right? You can have a spike in volume as soon as this reversal, if it's, it is a mini reversal, as soon as it sort of completes. The other thing that's um, sort of making me lean towards uh, reversal rather than continuation to the downside is the fact that this right here, I'm gonna zoom in, let's zoom into the hourly time frame. We are respecting the 618 Fibonacci retracement level uh, and specifically for this right here. This right here, this, um, what you call it? This candle, this bullish candle with the strong weight to the downside. This shows strong buy pressure. This sh shows reversal in a trend, okay? And so this, to me, is a potential initial break of structure, okay? And if it is a break of structure, then this is an A wave, okay? Right here. And this is my B wave. This is my B wave. And this is only valid if and only if we stay above $39,130, okay? If we go beyond that, then this no longer can be an A wave, an initial break of structure. It's gotta be an intra-wave correction. But given three waves here, I don't see this being an intra-wave correction unless we're doing an ending diagonal, a three, 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 and I don't see that in this correction. It looks like a you know regular flat correction to me. I don't see an ending diagonal in it. Uh, that's possible, but I don't think it's probable. So I'm seeing this being an initial break of structure. I'm seeing what what follows as being a B wave, a counter to this A wave, okay? And so what I'm expecting from here is, so let's draw it out really quickly. And guys, if you're getting value from this and you appreciate the intraday update, please like the video, share, and subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed daily Bitcoin updates, occasional intraday updates, and weekly live streams every Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, so, so that's my impulse of my B wave, right? So this drop of 
ever since you know uh, this morning this drop this three percent drop is my impulse of my b wave so according to my reversal pattern so let's just make this white so we can see it all right according to my reversal pattern i would need this to be an a wave I need another B wave. It could be a, a zigzag or a flat. I could be, at, I need another B wave. And then that completes my reversal, okay? And at that point, yes, we can drop below the origin of this. But, uh, so, cause they're kind of recursive, these B waves. This B wave would have to respect the 1618 of this. As long as this, as long as, so I said we can't drop drop below uh, 39130, I said, I think. Uh, let's do that again one more time. Yeah, 39, 130, okay? But that is for this structure. So this structure cannot continue to the downside. It looks like it's already been broken structurally. So I think that if we do get a B wave for this, right? And these reversal patterns that I talk about all the time on this channel, they're akin to, there's something that I've observed in my career trading. Uh, and that's what I call a reversal pattern three uh sort of uh contiguous not contiguous but three yeah I, I guess they're contiguous three contiguous corrective patterns they could be they're usually flat corrections but they can be a mix of flat and zigzag but typically they're flat corrections i call it uh a wave uh b and then a c section and the last part of the c section is your reversal wave okay uh and so they're they're kind of similar to uh, harmonics. You, you may have heard people use harmonics or you may have seen harmonics being used. Uh, I think that's the closest analog to my reversal pattern. Okay. It's kind of an original thing that I've developed um, through my observations of price action. So I, I expect after this initial break of structure of this B wave, you can get one more leg down before the pump up. Okay. And so that because B waves are recursive, meaning the B wave is always vis-a-vis -vis respective to, with respect to the A wave that formed before it. So we would get a new kind of invalidation right here. And that would be 38,837. I hope that makes sense, right? That, that phi ratio for this B wave is no longer. If this is a new A wave, then this B wave has a new invalidation, 1618. So to keep it simple, if we drop below 38,830, then none of this is valid as a reversal pattern, and it's all an intra-wave correction, and we should expect more downside to our bottom resistance. And you know, then you know, all bets are off, and we pretty much have to redo a lot of our analysis but this is what i'm seeing and this is why i'm expecting a move to the upside i'm expecting a move to my my uh next significant resistance of 45k as i discussed uh this morning so that's why i'm i'm pretty um i'm not bullish but i'm expecting a pump to the upside okay i guess that is bullish yeah i'm expecting a 10 plus percent pump from here 45 would be around 13% pump, okay? And that would be huge for altcoins, yeah? Um, uh, so yeah, that's what I'm seeing on the charts, on Bitcoin's chart. Um, mainly I'm concerned with the four hour bullish divergence that should confirm by 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'm seeing that we're uh, oversold on this Casca RSI on the four hourly time frame, and I'm seeing a, a reversal pattern um, just on the chart, right? On the hourly chart. It looks like a reversal pattern to me. I have my my big A wave. I have, have my my big B wave. And then I have my A, B, C. That's my full reversal pattern, right? These reversal patterns are tricky and they take time. So people don't like them. They don't like when you talk about them because all of this takes time and it's boring and it's sideways and people tune out for, for that. But actually that's what makes good trading when you can sit through all of this and you're you just take a position close to the bottom and you just wait for price action to do its thing and you you uh you know you take your profit 
when it actually plays out. But, you know, most people lose in trading. There's a reason. It's tough. And the, the one of the hardest things is to wait for a trade to play out. All right. So uh, last but not least, let's look at what open interest is doing. And as I said, opening the video, you see that shorts and I'm on the hourly time frame, but you can clearly see that shorts are, are increasing quite a lot. Um, you know, ever since uh, this morning, you have a, a massive increase of shorts. However, if you look, it looks like shorts are increasing into resistance, right? It's not like they're increasing into a blue sky breakout. Like this is resistance right here. And I understand that these, this is short. This is not an asset. This is human behavior. This is just showing open interest of shorts on, um, on Bitfinex. But like anything that's human behavior, like the buying and selling of assets, you can chart it and then you can read the, the, the patterns in the chart. And so that's basically what I'm doing. I'm seeing resistance of where, where shorts are right now. So I don't expect shorts to increase past this point, uh, much past this point. Okay. Um, in the same time, longs have increased and they seem to be at a place where they're not going into resistance. Okay. So longs have increased as well as have shorts, but I think shorts have increased much more than longs have in the same period of time. Because if you look today at around, I, I switched time frames. Let's go back to the hourly, just to compare apples to apples. You compare today at 10 a.m., I said, right? Uh, you do have some increase of longs, but not as much as the shorts have increased, right? Um, but the difference in longs and shorts here is that shorts or, or longs have corrected and have nothing but space okay there's a blue sky breakout there's no resistance above there was a slight correction prior right that began on the 19th of april and so it's likely given the open interest that longs continue to feed positive price action in the market and we see more positive price action and actually we see a drop off in shorts given that shorts are pretty much at resistance right now yeah um just to underline that you can just go on the higher time frames and you can see exactly what i'm saying you see there's no significant structural resistance right now in longs look at the stochastic rsi longs are pretty much bottomed out on the four hourly whereas shorts are they're not bottomed out. Um, they're a little higher up. Okay, they would they would be considered a little more oversold. All right, if if it was an asset, uh, over overbought ra rather overbought, right? Um, a little more overbought. Yeah, they can come a little higher, but I don't see shorts coming that much higher. It does look like there is some structural resistance where they are right here. Okay. So that's pretty much it for me. Once again, if you guys appreciate this analysis, please like the video, share the video with others, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, have a great weekend. I'm going to talk to you guys tomorrow morning as per usual. All right, take care. Have a good Friday night. Bye.